Welcome to Merseyside for Audley Harrison's seventh professional fight. A lot of questions still to be answered about all these performances in the ring, but out of it, he has few equals when it comes to verbal sparring. Audley Harrison is an Olympic champion, but that, that is as an amateur. Now I'm turning professional, I'm right at the bottom of the scale, and I need to learn. My second pro fight, I've done six, six three-minute rounds with a guy who wanted to win, a guy who was durable, and you see, I busted him up. The heavyweight champion of the world, that's my dream, that's my goal, and somebody's going to have to knock it out of me in the ring, and until that happens, I'm going to realise my dream. I just want to say, you know, get behind me, because the bottom line is, in three years' time, you ain't going to be able to get on my train, it's going to be going too fast, so, you know, believe in me, because I'm the real deal. Four and I've gone in against the guy 11 and 0 and lost a couple of rounds, took a few punches, but that's heavyweight boxing. I'm just going to keep rolling on. I've got nothing to prove to nobody. Again, I'm just going to keep going on. They can keep bringing these opponents. Dominic Ligas was a live opponent and he got dealt with like all the others. And so tonight we welcome from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Wade Lewis, a man who one commentator says you won't have heard of unless you're related to him. But the wholesale clothing salesman has stopped 10 of his 14 opponents, so tonight, can he derail the A-train? And also this evening, potentially an outstanding super featherweight contest between Nicky Cook and local lad Gary Thornhill, and two dazzling flyweight world champions, Peter Culshaw from Liverpool and Damian Kelly from Belfast, with Filipino opponents that could test them to the limit. Uh, let's now step down a few weight divisions on the bill here tonight in Liverpool. And as you can see from there, at six and eight respectively in the rankings for British super featherweights, Nicky Cook and Gary Thornhill, Thornhill a local lad, meeting tonight for the WBF Intercontinental title, which may not mean a great deal generally, but could be a step towards the big time for either of them, especially the unbeaten Arsenal supporting 23-year-old. Nicky, still unbeaten after 18 fights, so do you now regard yourself as a serious contender for British and European honours, or... Do you still see yourself as an exciting up-and-coming prospect? No, nah, I'm actually definitely a serious contender for European and beyond. And looking forward to the future. So, Gary Thornhill, you're facing him Saturday night, former British champion. Is this your first big test? Yeah, you could say that. It's, it's a stepping stone. But uh, I need to beat kids like Gary Thornhill to ever, if I'm ever going to do anything, in my personality, anyway. I'll, but, yeah, I'm confident I win. Now, you're fighting Thornhill in his hometown of Liverpool. We've all heard of hometown decisions in boxing. Does that worry you at all? No, not at all. Not at all. I don't. I can't fight him in his back garden. I don't care. And then day long as I come out the winner, then I'm, I'll be all right. That's a very experienced campaigner, and he's especially dangerous in the early stages of a fight. Yeah. How do you plan to deal with that? Well, I know he's going to come out fast, and uh, I'll just match him with him and just wear him down. With uh, long, long range shots and body shots. And what's your overall strategy going to be for the fight? Bait see on the night. So we join the fight at the start with Jim and Richie. For the first round. By far the majority of support in this 12 rounder for the WBF Intercontinental Super Featherweight title is going to be for the challenger. And he's the shaven headed 34 year old Gary the Tornado Thornhill from uh, Liverpool in the grey trunks with the red trim and wearing the gold trunks just 23 years old last month, 11 and a half years younger than the challenger is uh, Dagenham's Nicky Cook. And this is 19th professional contest. And we saw him here on the BBC in July against, well, a very tough opponent, one Russian called Andrei Devyatekin. And he had a hard-fought points win. And that uh, was a pretty defining contest in Nicky Cook's career. And this is another very good, well, part of the Nicky Cook learning curve because he's in against a man who's been the British featherweight champion and a former WBO intercontinental super featherweight champion. Good little stiff jab from Nicky Cook. and could well be Richie, the boxer against the puncher. Yeah. Could well be that, yeah. And Gary Thornhill likes to go back a long way with Gary. We had boxed uh, for Young England in, back in '86, and Gary was in the same team. And uh, there were great days down at Crystal Palace, and he was a featherweight then. But uh, yeah, I've watched his career, and uh, this will be a good test for Nicky Cook tonight because Gary Thornhill is no more. 
just Thornhill's second contest since he lost his British title to uh, Scott Harrison in Manchester just over a year ago and had a tough one as well when he came back recently in Glasgow when uh, Ukrainian Rakim Mingelev is a former Nicky Cook victim good shot by Cook moved nicely got that right hand over wasn't too far away just slightly faster to the punch at this stage Nicky Cook good left by Thornhill trying to ruffle the younger man's feathers but I think we both agreed Richie that last time out Cook against that, the tough Russian uh, the debut taken really learned a lot he really came of age in that contest yeah it was a very tough contest indeed and he was giving weight away as well and uh, against a very tricky opponent but he came through it and uh, he'll have to come through another tough test tonight Gary Thornhill this opening round they're both trying to, uh, to to feed off each other's mistakes and uh, they've both been successful at times but Cook he is slightly quicker to the punch good refereeing by London's Marcus McDonald who's scoring this contest it's not for a, a full-blown world title so only Marcus McDonald will score good brisk opening round but Cook's faster hands may just have shaded it but there's a long long way to go remember this is scheduled for 12 or three minute runs this is Cook's second defense of this title which he won in January of this year and that's a good start by Cook and that's a nice little gesture they gave each other the old uh, eyeball test at the start of the round as the referee was giving them instructions. But that was very nice. That may well have just diffused what could have been a, an interesting and perhaps potentially nasty situation. So this is Nicky Cook, 23 years old. You couldn't get better than that. 18 contests, 18 wins, 10 inside the distance. And he's moved along very nicely since he turned pro with Jess Harding just a couple of years or so ago. Across the ring, the man they call the Tornado, now 34 years old, Gary Thornhill. Just uh, three blemishes on that, all by stoppage, interestingly, but very, very experienced. 26 contests, 26 wins, and the three stoppages all to very good men. Second judge, round two. Well, they're really packed to the rafters here in Liverpool. 15, 1600 souls. Some places standing room only. Good right hand by Gary Thornhill, the shaven headed challenger, the Liverpudlian. Been training in uh, Tenerife, sparring with Alex Lemon, who's going to take on his fellow Scott Alex Arthur in the British title challenge. A wonderful right hand by Nicky Cook, following up a very educated left. Yeah, that was a cracky right hand from Cook there. What Gary Thornhill's got to do, he's got to press the pace and literally sustain the pressure on Cook, getting back on them, them ropes and then put the combinations in. Certainly when the, when the fight's boxing at long range, Nicky Cook is in command, he's in control. Thornhill once again being a little bit on the careless side with that head of his. Good refereeing by Marcus McDonald. Cook's been that little bit quicker all the way through this. Nice variation by Cook. Yeah, that's terrific boxing from Cook. Switching from the body to the head with the with two left hooks. Excellent stuff, and then moving away. Good boxing, very impressive. The Thornhill's been a pro for almost 10 years. And his only three losses have come to pretty useful men. Justin Juco, Michael Gomez, and most recently Scott Harrison, all of whom stopped him. But both fighters there were, were guilty of dropping their hands on the break and each caught the other one with terrific left hooks and I think Cook's, cut, cook. Cook's cut, Cook's cut, I think that clash of heads has done it Cook is definitely cut, all good solid right hand from Thornhill that was his best shot so far it's uh, pretty high, it looks as like it may well be on the eyebrow close to the nose, Cook gets him with a good short right hand but the corner will worry about that and already they're getting themselves prepared to uh, do a bit of running repairs Yeah, there was a terrific right hand that went in from Thornhill there. He really has got to keep the pace on. Much better boxing from Thornhill. Cook now, he must keep this fight long. Just get on his bike and, and stick to long-range boxing. Does not need to get involved with Gary Thornhill here tonight. Well, that cut certainly hasn't worsened, and there's every chance they might be able to uh, sort it out mid-round. In the meantime, it's all eyes on the action. 
And this always had the makings of one of those great British classics. Wonderful left hook from Thornhill again. Cook dropping that right of his. Cook comes back. I tell you, Cook hasn't got a bad chin, Richie. He took a couple of cracking left hooks there. And he's just been guilty of dropping his own right hand there, Cook. And uh, Gary Thornhill certainly took advantage and landed with two sweet left hooks. Well, that was a very serious um, caution as opposed to a warning from Marcus McDonald to Thornhill about his head. Thornhill certainly looks very strong. Good right hand by Thornhill, beating Cook to the punch that time. What a cracking three minutes we've had. So, first round one suspects to uh, Nicky Cook, and the second Richie, you reckon, perhaps to Thornhill? Oh, definitely, yeah. I think Cook, Cook just edged the first round, but that second round there, for me, Thornhill got through with some lovely cracking shots. And there's that left up off the break, and uh, that was a cracking punch. And the left up seemed to be his, his best shot. Although that one was a little bit low. Yeah, a little bit low inside, and uh, cleverly from uh, Thornhill's point of view on the blind side of the referee, but nothing wrong with that left hand, and Nicky Cook, to his credit, came back and uh, put in a little straight shot, but that was another real stonking left hook from uh, Gary Thornhill. Well, that's not going to worry them at this stage unless it opens up anymore. And straight in with the old uh, adrenaline solution to try oh, to close that over. Seconds. Father Paul in front of uh, his little boy, Nicky. You couldn't have wished for better here in a packed arena in Liverpool than a Liverpudlian against the boy from Essex. The Liverpudlian Gary the Tornado Thornhill, who was the British featherweight champion and was the WBO Intercontinental Super Featherweight Champion, hoping to win a third title. Nicky Cook determined to hang on to the only one he's got so far. Good work in Cook's corner. Cook rather worryingly. Tends to let the hands go a little bit on the low side. Yeah, that's been his problem here tonight, these first few rounds. His, his hands have dropped back, you know, a little bit low, and he's been punished. Been good will from Thornhill. He's come in with a couple of good left hooks. But uh, the better boxing's coming from Cook, but he must keep it nice and long, mid to long range against Gary Thornhill. Cook has a, a certain advantage in terms of, of, of height and reach both in great condition, nine stone, three and a half, just half a pound inside the super featherweight limit. And I wonder, can they keep this up for 12 rounds? There's a little right from Thornhill. Cook comes straight back at him. That's what Cook should be doing, jabbing. Oh, lovely right hand. Thornhill wobbled. Cook going to the body again. That was Cook's best shot so far. And Thornhill really had to suck in the air. Well, they're both putting in some, some real hard shots here, and, uh, but um, Nicky Cook Nicky Cook caught his opponent with a cracking right hand. That was a peach of a shot, but Gary Thorne will come back himself with his own shot, so uh, it really is even Stephen up to this stage, and uh, it's, it's turned out to be a cracking contest here. Greater variation coming from Cook. Thornhill maybe reckons that this is uh, the last chance for him. Has got himself into well, arguably the best shape of his career so far. Again, just fractionally quicker with the left hand, Nicky Cook. Good footwork by the defending champion. Yeah, that could be the difference here. Nicky Cook's got to use that nice, quick footwork. Gary Thornhill is just a little bit flat-footed, a little bit too slow on his feet. And Cook must take advantage of that and, and move in and out with the attacks and make sure he gets out, gets out and keeps it long range. Still occasional signs of a, a little bit of inexperience on the part of Nicky Cook. But that's once again good footwork by him. If he can do that and pick his man off and keep himself out of trouble, he can start building up a points lead. But we're only well, still in the third round. Another cracking right hand from Cook there. Excellent shot, and that's a lovely one-two combination. That's good boxing, because he's, he's got out of the way and avoided the shots himself. Good boxing from Cook. And Thornhill's face starting to redden a little bit. Left from Cook right at the end was a little bit low, but that was a better round by Nicky Cook. Yeah, he's just edged ahead again. I think that, that was a 10-9 round. He's gone ahead two rounds to one at this stage. So Gary Thornhill across the ring from uh, Nicky Cook, and what a good job they've done on that little cut.
This was Cook at his best, coming, stepping in, not letting his man off the hook at all. Good pressure of boxing, and that was a great little right hand over the top. Traveled six, seven inches and land, landed very nicely indeed. And the pressure was kept on all the way through. And Cook, having been uh, troubled a little bit, more than a little bit in that second round, came back into this contest with a vengeance. Not the full contact, but certainly hurt Thornhill right at the end. Yeah, better boxing was from Cook there. That punch was a little bit high on the head, and, and uh, we all know what the tempo shots can be. They can be terrible punches. And uh, better boxing from Cook that round. Second round, round four. Still anybody's contest, and what a contest been so far. That was definitely low by Cook right at the start. Marcus McDonald didn't see it. Thornhill's face reddening up, especially around the left-hand side where Cook's caught him with a couple of useful right hands. Yeah, and a solid throw, Gary Thornhill. He didn't even flinch about when that punch was delivered low. Just on the blind side, the referee. The referee didn't shoot the save. It was definitely a low shot. Cook's throws that right hand. He sometimes leaves it a little bit low and doesn't get it back up to the side of his head quickly enough. But Thornhill hasn't caught him with the left in reply for a round or two. And there's a lot of blood coming from somewhere. Oh, Cook's eye has gone. His right eye has gone. No, I don't know whether that was a clash or not, but that's a very nasty cut. The little nick above the eyebrow was nothing to worry about, but it's the eyelid itself has been cut. And although we can't see from this angle, I'm perfectly sure that Cook is in a lot of trouble with that eye, and it's streaming blood. It is streaming blood. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, that's really worrying as well, Jim, because it's obviously in a threatening position there, just above the eye, the blood running into the eye, and uh, that's not good news at all for Nicky Cook. Well, he's brushing it away, and he must know that he's cut, and, well, more importantly, Thornhill knows that Cook has cut. Marcus McDonald is letting this go. Good refereeing, but I'm sure in the back of his mind he's thinking, what's going to be the outcome of this? Midway through the fourth round, Cook was just easing ahead, and that's really spurred on Gary Thornhill in front of his home fans here in Liverpool. Cook's making light of it. What a great exchange. What a great contest this really is. Toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff, but the referees hardly having to, to, to break them up to say a word. Lovely boxing from both fighters. Well, Cook has never sustained anything as bad as that cut. And if the corner can do something, well, I tell you, it's hats off to them, because that's a nasty one. It's right on the... It's right on the eyelid itself, right in the corner. The blood is trickling down the... 23-year-old face of Nicky Cook, Gary Thornhill threatening to land in the middle of the photographers. That was good footwork by Cook. And now Gary Thornhill looking for the left hook, literally so he can open that cut up a little bit more. But uh, Cook's got to make a decision. He's, he's either got to try and, try and stop Thornhill or he's got to get on his bike, but the corner will be desperate for him to get back to that corner so they can work on it and have a look how bad the cut actually is. Well, Thornhill looks very, very strong, much more experienced. Good stuff by Cook right at the end of the round, but there's not much between them in this one. But the worry will be that Cook's cut is going to worsen. And this is where the cuts man earns his money. Father Paul makes way, and they'll have to go to town on that. Well, how unfortunate that was. For Nicky Cook, but Marcus McDonald is not even going over to have a look at it, so he's uh, in good professional refereeing style, is letting the corner men get on with their job, and then he'll see. So forget about the little one above the eyebrow, it's the one right at the corner of the eyes, the worry. Maybe not just as bad as we first thought, because it's further out than I first imagined. There's that clash of heads, and I'm quite sure, Richie, that's what did it. It's hard to tell for me how the cut actually came, but yeah, the, the heads did clash, and uh, how many times have we seen cuts from head clashes? So yeah, it's a fair bet, it, it could have come from that head clash. Second Taking every single second, Nicky Cook and the corner. Four rounds gone, eight more scheduled to go. Good work with the left hand by Nicky Cook, but he's got to keep that right-hand side of his face protected. And the blood's coming out of that cut yet again. 
this will be calamitous for Nicky Cook if he should lose this contest on cuts. But he's only 23 years old, Richie. There's loads and loads of boxing there. And he's shown that he's, he is a very good boxer. He's always been rated as a very good prospect. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's an excellent boxer. And he's he's going to really have to work now to, to get victory here tonight. But I would just like to see him just start... He's got to make, as I said, Jim, he's got to make a decision. He's got to either try and try and stop and Gary Thorne or by planting his feet and landing with some bigger shots, or he's got to get on his bike and, and play safe and just get behind the jab and try and survive the rest of the fight and, and nick the fight with the jab. That's, um, that's a hell of a decision with, with only the fifth round going into the fifth round. Thorne looking much more purposeful. A good body shot went in there by Nicky Cook. Well, it hasn't got any better that eye, that's for certain. And, if it doesn't get any worse, well, referee will let this go as long as he possibly can because you don't want a champion to lose his title because of a cut. But there has to come a point where he says enough. Thornhill's starting to blow a little bit. Cook is getting him with some solid body shots. Yeah, well, that was certainly slow, Gary Thornhill. These are, these are very heavy body shots, what uh, Nicky Cook's throwing, and that will definitely slow Gary Thornhill. But Thornhill, he's just got to keep pressuring Cook try and open the cut a little bit more for the referee to stop the fight but he must keep a high guard himself as he's as he's moving into attack the boxing a little better on the retreat Thornhill doing all the pressing it's a rather tired looking right to the body by uh, Nicky Cook so how much of the back of the old mind Richie if you if you're cut as badly as that does it actually bother you oh well yeah Jim I believe you mean it really bothers you a couple of times it happened to me and I just got on my bike and just kept behind the jam. But uh, as I said, this is, you know, there's still a long way to go in this contest and that's a big decision to make in only the fifth round. Well, cut apart, Cook hasn't uh, had a bad round at all. He's landed with some very good body shots and he maybe he's just nicked this little one. Although it's Gary Thornhill, he's coming forward all the time. I mean, when you, I mean, when you feel the blood running down your, your face, you, when you go back to the corner, you're listening to your corner more than anything, because they can obviously see how bad it is. But that's a terrific combination there from Thorne on the inside. Cook just missing now. The timing seems to have slipped a little bit. Last few seconds of this run. A little bit worrying there ahead of Thornhill and Cook's face, but that wasn't a bad finish by Thornhill. Well, Nicky Cook really does look uh, rather worried about that. He's just staring straight in front of him, and straight away they'll wipe off the excess blood. And Thornhill, although he's a little bit bruised and battered, will be pretty pleased with the way this is going. And that cut on Cook's eye may well have uh, turned this contest round. Certainly Thornhill has been hugely encouraged by it. That was a great shot round the corner by uh, Nicky Cook, and a very good left hook to follow up, but he didn't perhaps do it often enough in that round. And psychologically, I think that cut has really bothered him. Thornhill working very nicely inside, a little short, crisp punches. And they squeeze it and they try to seal it and they put a bit of grease over it and hope that will do it. But one uh, clash could open it up. And uh, Richie Widow, the former WBC Super Middleweight Champion of the World, has it all square. forward as he has done right from the start good work by Thornhill he's got his combinations right and again and the pattern has changed as Thornhill is being first to the punch yeah he certainly is and uh, he's grown in confidence obviously from the cook but that's a lovely terrific left hand again from Thornhill uh, cook again guilty of just dropping his hands on the retreat Well, Cook had a very, very hard rate eight-rounder in the Wembley Conference Center in July against the hard man from Russia, Andre Devyatekin. But to put that into perspective, last time out, Devyatekin was stopped in three rounds by the outstanding South African Philip and Do. And that's better from Cook there. Three or four punches went in, then he moved away. That was good boxing. That's what he's got to get back to, Jim. Lead with the jab, land the combination, and then move and get out of the way. Cook is puffing and blowing a little bit. 
But the pleasing thing from his point of view, and I'm sure the corner's point of view, is that the eye certainly hasn't worsened. And so far in this round, and we're midway through it, there's no sign of any uh, bleeding. Well, that's a great sign, and obviously Cook's corner will have t may have told him that the cut isn't that bad. Look, it probably looked a lot worse than what it actually was. But what he doesn't want to do now, he doesn't need to be boxing at close range like this. Look at Thornhill's head. He's risking, you know, um, the injury even more, worsening the injury. So he must keep it long, Jim. Get back to that mid to long range boxing, stay on the outside. Well, Thornhill is certainly not boxing like a man who's only had about eight or nine contests in the last four years. He looks very fresh. And if anything, Cook is uh, starting to puff a little bit. Again, just a little caution to Thornhill about his head. Good work by Thornhill inside. That left hand of his is really getting through to Cook. Yes, some good work from both fighters actually on the inside. But Cook must keep those hands up. And going back with Thornhill, I mean, this really is a make-or-break fight for him. That's how he probably feels. He's got nowhere else to go after this, so this is... He must win this contest. And if he wins this one, he might be thinking about that. Another crack at uh, Scott Harrison. There's a long way to go, ten seconds to go. Good shot once again, that left hand of Thornhill getting through, but uh, not, deliver, not delivered with anything resembling the power of the earlier rounds, and Cook will be encouraged by that. So I think the Cook corner will be very pleased that their man has survived and the cut hasn't got any worse. And uh, Thornhill wasn't able to press home the advantage of the previous run. Richie, this is going to go either way. Yeah, I mean, it really is uh, anybody's fight, this one. But for me there, in that way, Cook started to get back to his boxing, put some nice little combination together, and may just, may, that may have just been the difference there, and he may just have nicked the round. That's what Cook had to do, be first to the punch every time. He did get caught when he tried to uh, stand still, and Thornhill very good on the counter. And a couple of good little left hands from uh, Gary the Tornado Thornhill, the liver puddly in front of his home crowd, put Cook in the back foot. But when Cook stayed away and kept him at long range, it was Cook who scored, even though there was only one little scoring oh, shot there, and he had to take one in return. They are coming out from that round. Uh, Marcus McDonald indicated very, very clearly to uh, Thornhill that he's not at all happy about the way the local man has been using the head. Nicky Cook just uh, shaming it at this stage, that last round, nudging him in front on Richie's scorecard. And Cook's got to get back to the way he boxed in the opening couple of rounds before he got himself cut. Yeah, the problem Cook's got here is his, his guard isn't, isn't too good when he's retreating and when he's exchanging his guard is very low, but also his feet are slow and he's shown at times that he has got faster footwork than, than what we're actually seeing from him here. Earlier on in the contest he was moving in and out of range pretty, pretty quick, but here now he's slowed down, he's been caught with some good shots and, he, and he's much prepared now to stand and trade, which is a bad thing. And now he's just oozing a little bit, but uh, certainly not that bad. And I just get the feeling that Nicky Cook is very tired. Nicky Cook has uh, been spoken to for a low blow. And that's annoyed Gary Thornhill, and there's that head going in to the face of Cook. Now, we've got something going off in the arena. To me, it sounds like a, a fire alarm. I'm not sure whether it's real or not, but it's certainly very noisy. I'll tell you one thing, it's not a mobile phone. It's still one of the greatest uh, curses on the face of the planet, I have to say. But back they come together again. Somebody needs to go and get that sorted out. I think promoter Jess Harding has left the uh, the ring. And we'll keep our fingers crossed that that's not serious. Yeah, well, they've uh, managed to turn the thing off, so I hope it uh, was indeed a false alarm and somebody having a very silly prank. But there's nothing well silly at all about the way these two are going about their business. Yeah, Gary Thornhill here, he won't believe his luck that, that Nicky Cook is just standing and willing to trade with him. 
because this is the fight he wants and uh, you must say he's, he's getting the better of it and there's a couple of low blows going in from Cook here now. I don't think they're intentional but uh, he has been warned. But uh, again, Gary Thornton warned about the head. Well, he says no more. I think if it happens again, he certainly will take a point off him. It wasn't that long ago we saw a, a title fight in America, Richie, where somebody was warned, what, five times and then eventually was disqualified. It was Winky Wright against Bronco McCart. Good shot, great shot by Cook. What a great left hand, and Thornhill really hurt. Now that has taken the wind out of Thornhill's sails. I don't know that Cook has got the time to finish this, but the left hand from the champion went in, and Thornhill hurt, and Thornhill's in big trouble. Referee says, no, he's not done. He's not, he's not done, he's called it off. What a turn round for Cook. One left hand in. All Thornhill had to do, and we saw it in an Audley Harrison contest, was put a knee on a canvas, and the referee would not have let Nicky Cook advance. Good refereeing by Marcus McDonald. The man was sitting on the ropes. He had both feet on the canvas, both hands were off the canvas, and one left hand to the body changed the whole complexion of this contest, and Thornhill simply folded. What a sensational finish. Thornhill still in the contest. Nicky Cook badly cut, really suffering all sorts of trouble, and Thornhill absolutely devastated, and he cannot believe that that was stopped. But he was he was offering nothing. He was offering nothing. Even if he'd gone down, he might have been in a chance. And what a sensational finish that was. And I'm sure Nicky Cook himself can hardly believe it. Well, Thornhill certainly didn't have a knee on the, on the canvas, did he? And uh, obviously the, the referee was very, very close. He didn't think he was down. But uh, I was just very, very surprised that uh, that he has called it off. Well, what a finish. Cook, Thornhill, that was a great shot. Look at the look of pain on the face of Thornhill. He was really staggered by that. He had to hold on. The referee came in and broke them up, and he was in all sorts of trouble. And all of a sudden, all the steam had gone from Gary the Tornado, Thornhill, and Cook kept on him. Now, this is the interesting part. Thornhill went down, he sat on the ropes, the referee said, that's okay. He said, box on, because the man had not anything other than his feet touching the canvas, and Marcus McDonald said, there's no point in letting him take any more. Well done, what was your verdict? It was a real brawl, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a brawl, but I needed one, and it was about time I did have one. But, uh, I had no excuse, it was a good fire on the night, but I'm the one who stuck out here, I'm the one who dug deep, and I wanted to come off. Uh, the... I, I, was, I, was, I was in trouble, well, I won't say I was in trouble, but... I was a little bit distressed with the fight, but I stuck to my guns and I just went through it. The cut was so nasty, but it didn't actually seem to hamper you. Just give us your version. No, it didn't really, because, I mean, all the way through the fight, he's moaning to me that I made a straight a little low. But listen, he was, he was going to be there dangerously all, all the fight. Not he he claimed you hit him low when it ended. We can actually show you the end of the fight and just get you to talk us through. And you have a look at this and give us your, uh, your verdict. No. Uh, it was a hell of a body shot. Yeah. That definitely wasn't. And it was holding on to dear life there. You're happy with that? It wasn't the greatest performance, but I've come out a winner. I've come out victorious. OK, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a tremendous contest, that, and the dramatic finale.